Hi guys. Long time no talk to. It is now a it is a fine Sunday afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this in this uh, undisclosed swamp somewhere on the collapsing planet and I have been uh, out in the wilderness for uh, over a week and my camera unfortunately ended up on the for all intents and purposes on the bottom of the Peace River and uh, so haven't been able to bring you a video for a while but I have my brand new better camera yes here today and it is now Sunday January 31st 2021 so I am finally getting around to my I guess two days late and a couple of dollars short Mongave video my ecological collapse video which I try to bring you every Friday when my camera is not on the bottom of a river uh, but better late than never for us to it is oh it is Sunday January 31st 2021 so this should have been the January 29th but close enough so uh, we're gonna see what's on the mind of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com while well, I have been floating down the river or sinking to the bottom as the case may be speaking of bottoms of rivers we're gonna start out here uh, I've mentioned this story before about the invasion of the crayfish clones, invasion of the crawdad clones. They're talking about specifically the ones in Madagascar, but these things have also uh, gotten loose in Europe. They're everywhere from Madagascar to, I believe, France. This marbled crayfish evolved only in recent decades as part of the German aquarium trade it is entirely female and reproduces clonally without males uh, I mean these girls don't even need boys okay this mutant crawdad uh, just taking over the planet from Madagascar to Europe uh, this is pretty much, as they say, a human invention, and this will not be the last invasion of some uh, clonally reproduced uh, in invasive species. But anyway, uh, just a sign of the collapse. But speaking of uh, an even bigger sign of the collapse, Let's see what's going on. Uh, this is Manga Bay's continuing coverage of the insect apocalypse here in the opening of 2021. We find death by 1,000 cuts. Are major insect losses imperiling life on Earth? And we will find out the question whether major insect losses are imperiling life on Earth over the course of the next few decades. Um, so we're going to go to some new studies featured in a recent edition of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences assess insect declines around the planet. On average, the decline in insect abundance is thought to be around 1 to 2 percent per year or 10 to 20 percent per decade. Do the math here guys. These losses are being seen on nearly every continent even within well protected areas. Yes, take a wild guess why precipitous insect declines are being escalated by humans as soaring population and advanced technology push us ever closer to overshooting several critical planetary boundaries including 
biodiversity, climate change, nitrification, and pollution, planetary boundary overshoot could threaten the viability of life on Earth. Now, I don't think the insect apocalypse in and of itself is one of the nine planetary boundaries that we're overshooting. Maybe we should make the insect apocalypse uh, boundary number 10, although I guess you just say the first one here, biodiversity collapse being uh, certainly a poster child being insects. Okay, from insects to elephants. With just 10 years left to save Sumatran elephants, what can be done now? Yes, I would say uh, what can be done now is take pictures of Sumatran elephants while you still can uh, and kiss them goodbye. You can, the Sumatran elephant, the Sumatran tiger, the Sumatran rhino, the Sumatran, did I say tiger? Tiger, elephant, rhino, oh, the uh, Sumatran orangutan, uh, just the Sumatran anything. With just 10 years left to save Sumatra, what can be done now? Kiss Sumatra goodbye while you still can. Okay. In Sumatra, elephants' forested habitat, and again, elephants, rhinos, tigers, orangutans, leopards, all of the rest, has been replaced recently at a rapid pace for commercial activities like oil palm plantations, pulp and paper production, and other uses. The total Sumatran elephant population was estimated to be no more than 28 individuals in 2007, but they likely number about half that, or about 1,400 Sumatran elephants left on the planet as their numbers have been cut in half in the last 14 years. It has been said that there are just 10 years left to save this critically endangered species. There you go. 10 years. Uh, I wish 10 years. I would say 5 years. From so, <clears throat> so then they go from the elephant to the rhino. Rarely seen Sumatran rhinos are now even more elusive as threats close in. The wild Sumatran rhinos of Wei Kambas National Park in Indonesia are becoming even more elusive in response to changes to their habitat, according to experts. Fires and poaching of other species for bushmeat pose a serious threat to the critically endangered rhinos and everything else in, uh, in <coughs> Sumatra. The park is believed to be one of the last strongholds of the Sumatran rhino with estimates of between 12 and 33 uh, wild rhinos living there out of a global population now less than 80. Yep, and uh, also, it's, it, I can't believe it wasn't mentioned in Manga Bay. I guess it came uh, out right after they went to press. The mainstream media talking today about the collapse of the of the white rhino population uh, in Kruger National Park in South Africa. You know, the last bastion uh, of, of rhinos on the planet. Uh, the newest census coming out of South Africa. Not quite as dire as Sumatra, but even the mainstream media 
saying it's time to kiss the southern white rhino goodbye. Uh, you can kiss rhinos goodbye. Rhinos, elephants, orangutans, tigers, humans, we're all out of here. Uh, oh, insects, of course. Okay, let's see. We've looked at crawdads, insects, elephants, and rhinos. Well, the crawdads are doing pretty good. The, uh, the cloned crawdads, everything else, uh, not doing so well. Uh, oh, we're going to stay in Sumatra. Don't forget the frogs in Sumatra. This is kind of a, I guess, a Sumatra roundup. Uh, the collapse of Sumatra. Don't forget the frogs. Planned coal trucking road threatens a forest haven for Sumatran frogs. Yes, the Harapan Forest on the Indonesian island of Sumatra is teeming with frog species. Yes, one of which was just described last year. And you know, how many times have we heard the story? They barely have time to describe a brand new species of animal. And now these amphibians are already threatened by a coal trucking road that the government has approved to be built right through the forest. Yes, environmental activists have pushed back against the project, calling on the government to either suspend the project or approve alternative routes that would bypass the forest altogether or cut through a less pristine portion of it. There you go. You can kiss goodbye the Sumatran frogs while you're kissing by goodbye the Sumatran rhinos and the Sumatran elephants and the tigers and the orangutans. Okay, for the knee-slapping, hopium-soaked apocaloptimism story of the week, it is not too late yet to save the Philippine pangolin. Yes, Philippine pangolins found only on the island province of Palawan are among the most heavily tracked mammals in the world, with nearly 7,000 seized from traffickers between 2018 and 2019. It sure sounds to me like it's not too late to save the Philippine pangolin. Um, anyway... Uh, Let's kiss goodbye the Philippine pangolin while we're kissing goodbye all of those things over there in Sumatra. Not too late to save the Philippine pangolin. It's too late to save the humans. It's too late to save the planet. Anyway, here's this complicated story about forest gaps and tree mortality studies in the Brazilian Amazon. Uh, anyway, this is just basically talking about how the Amazon rainforest is screwed. Uh, I have a lot to do today, guys. I am uh, heading back uh, to South Florida to escape the latest Arctic blast. Got a lot on my plate today, so we're going, we're just going to flip through a lot of these. Uh, here is a uh, hilarious story about how timber organizations are developing a peace park in Borneo. Yes. 
a peace park. Anyway, moving on. What does a great Argus pheasant sound like? What does a great Argus pheasant sound like? Where's the fact? 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 All right, that was a recording of a great Argus pheasant. Oh, here we are. Uh, we've, I knew we would get to the Sumatran tiger. We've gone through elephants, rhinos, and frogs. Do not forget the, uh, the, uh, the tigers that were kissing it by a small holder agriculture cuts into key Sumatran tiger habitat. This is talking about planet nibblers as opposed to the planet eaters in Sumatra. Don't forget the planet nibblers. <clears throat> Satellite data show several surges in deforestation inside Kerichi Sablat National Park last year. The park provides vital habitat for critically endangered Sumatran tigers as well as many other species. The primary driver of this deforestation, you know, is not these giant oil palm corporations, but it appears to be the expansion of small farms inside these joke protected areas. Uh, we're going to talk more about that. Now this one, this story I have, uh, Manga Bay and I have been reporting on for years and I have even interviewed some of Manga Bay's, you know, regular uh, reporters down there in the in the Amazon rainforest, and uh, I would have to go back and listen to my interviews from the past couple of years uh, with these folks claiming that the Amazon rainforest has already tipped into. A, a net source of carbon due to all of the logging and uh, deforestation and fires that the Amazon rainforest has already tipped from what they call a carbon sink to a carbon source. So I'm not sure why we're seeing this headline, Amazon is on the brink of turning into a carbon source. Forest, you know, at least at, at least at the uh, opening of 2021, forest remain a carbon sink, stashing away about 7.6 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide every year, but their ability to lock carbon is weakening in the last 20 years alone, forest in Southeast Asia, particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, have now turned into net carbon emitters, and the Amazon rainforest threatens to go to the same, the same way. Oh, okay, so the Brazilian Amazon, where most of the rainforest is, uh, between 2000 and 2019, the Brazilian Amazon flipped, I guess, from, from carbon sink to carbon source. Uh, and now the rest of the Amazon is right behind them. We've lost Southeast Asia. We're losing Latin America. And then, uh, of course, uh, the Congo rainforest will be the last. What is especially worrying is the loss of pristine swaths of forest in countries like Madagascar that have kept carbon out of the atmosphere for decades, if not centuries. 
I think Madagascar became a carbon source about 50 years ago. Okay, this is the bigger story about planet nibblers. Six percent of Earth's protected land is now used to grow crops. Protected areas are intended to safeguard the planet's vulnerable inhabitants, including 83 percent of Earth's endangered species. A new study reveals that cropland now takes up 13.6 percent of the planet's ice-free surface area and overlaps with 6 percent of its protected areas. Uh, yes, the study's authors call for national and international sustainability goals. Yes, again, this is Planet Nibblers moving into all of these joke protected areas, which mean absolutely nothing to start slashing, burning, farming. Here is a story about the uh, illegal ivory trade still just going on on eBay, so they're using other names uh, on eBay to hide the fact that they're selling ivory. Uh, <clears throat> okay, what's going on with mining in the Amazon? Indigenous groups blast Amazon State's plan to legalize wildcat mining. Brazilian legislators in the Amazon state of Roraima <coughs> have passed a bill legalizing Garimpo wildcat mining, basically that gold mining stuff, on public lands without studies. Amendments to that law would also legalize the use of toxic mercury in gold processing and greatly expand the legal size of mining claims. Do you think so? Indigenous groups say the law was passed without their adequate consultation and will invite gold miner invasions of indigenous reserves in the state. Um, yes, in the since the election of President Jair Bolsonaro, more than 20,000 illegal miners have been reported on Yanomami lands. Uh, Wildcat mining has already been declared legal in some Brazilian Amazon states. Based on that experience, experts say that legalization in Roraima will enable fraud with gold illegally mined in indigenous reserves laundered to become, quote, legal gold and illicit conflict gold trafficked from neighboring Venezuela, laundered in Roraima. Good Lord. Uh, so, last week, you know, we were talking about this giant flood over there in Indonesia, uh, basically being, certainly being exacerbated, if not outright caused, by all of the... Uh, deforestation and mines, but, hmm, Indonesia, the Indonesian government says the plant, you know, these oil palm plantations and mines did not worsen flooding. The data beg to differ. Yes, Indonesia's environment minister claims deforestation for oil palm plantations and coal mines had nothing to do with recent deadly floods in southern Borneo, but his ministry's own data and statements by a senior minister attribute the intensity of the flooding 
on the massive loss of forest cover across the river's watershed. Uh, do you think so? Uh, let's see. Didn't we already... I'm confused. Is this another story on the Sumatran rhinos? I've, I, I get all of these disappearing. I guess this is the disappearing kiss the Sumatran rhinos goodbye in Bukit Barasan Selaton National Park. Yes, is believed to be one of the last homes of the nearly extinct rhino, but the little evidence left showing the existence of rhinos in the park has sparked concerns among some experts that the species may have already gone extinct there. Yes. Uh, while some still believe the park holds a rhino population, the loss of forest to farms, road, and illegal encroachment inside the park makes that scenario increasingly unlikely. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not going to talk about the C word here. What's going on with the, uh, let's do one more, guys, and uh, we're going to wrap it up in Guinea-Bissau, which I think is sub-Saharan Africa. Fears for Rosewood as Guinea-Bissau prepares to lift six-year logging ban. The Guinea-Bissau government is poised to lift a moratorium on logging that came into force in 2015. Police. Uh, forestry officials and conservationists say they fear a return to rampant over-harvesting of rosewood and other valuable species. But those defending an end to the ban say illegal logging has continued in Guinea-Bissau anyway, despite the hilarious moratorium. Yes. Uh, conservationists say, without better data about the current state of the country's forest, it will be impossible to monitor or sustainably manage a resumption of logging. Yes, a anyway guys, uh, I'm just going to wrap it up here because uh, I have to head to the grocery store and the laundromat while I still can. And I suggest you get out there and enjoy global industrial civilization while you still can. I am heading back to uh, Fish Eating Creek tomorrow. Not sure how many. It'll probably be Friday before I do another rant. Come see me at Fish Eating Creek. I'm actually... Okay, so guys, Monday night I'm going to be in Campsite 14 Tuesday and Wednesday night in the most beautiful campsite at Fish Eating Creek Campground, Campsite 62 at Fish Eating Creek Campground. Uh, so come see me and the little dog, and uh, we can get out there and enjoy it while we still can. Bye, guys.